See, we're talking about the manifestation of life. The life you have received in Christ Jesus. But as long as you keep preaching religion, let me, let me show it to you. Let, let, let me show you. As long as you keep preaching, stop this, stop that, don't do the other thing. All you are actually doing is reinforcing the very behavior you're trying to stop. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations being used by the power of the Holy Spirit has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. If you study the original creation, the scripture talks about the day that God created and made things. No, you're not. No. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me, I didn't, wasn't, I wasn't planning on going here either. Ah, uh, but I, I got to do it now. Uh, everybody say created and made. Say it again. Ooh, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, this is going to help you. This is going to help you. Everybody say created and made. Created. Say it again. Created. Say it one more time. Created. Now, go to Genesis 1. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Go to Genesis, uh, go to Genesis 2. Verse number one, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which he had, which God had created and made. Everybody say created, created. And, made. and made. Say it again, created, created. And, made. and made. Now these two words are two different words in Hebrew. To create means to bring into being from nothing. To make means to squeeze into shape from pre-existing material. So God, a, hey, so God creates man before he makes man. Man is a creation in God before he is formed from the dust of the earth. He is as real in God as he will ever be before he is formed. But there is no substantial manifestation until he forms him out of the dust of the earth. That's when you can see man. But he is before you can see him. Because he is created in God. Are you still here? Yeah. See, in Genesis 1, 26, God creates man. At that point, man is a created spirit being. <sighs> then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let the, 
there is no physical entity when God says that. Man is a creation in God. Just like your dream house yeah. is a creation in you yeah. before it's ever built, but it must be manifested to have substance. So God creates man in Genesis 1:26. At this point, man is a created spirit being, however. In Genesis 2 7, go to Genesis 2 7. In Genesis 2 7, it says, Now God formed, and the Lord God formed man out whoo, of the dust of the earth. So here God forms what he had already created. He was created, but had not yet been formed or shaped. To function in the earth. Are you still here? Yes. He was created, but not yet manifested. Now that is the original creation. Now let me show you something that will make this, woo! Ha ha, I got it now. Let, let me show you something uh, that will make this, woo! Good God. Let me show you something that will make this really clear to you. Look at Ephesians chapter whew, 2 and verse number 10. This is what this means. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. Talking about now the new creation, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So just like the original creation, man, was created in God, the new creation, man, was created in Christ Jesus. Just as the original creation, man, had to be formed, the new creation, man, also must be formed. The original creation was formed by the word of God because God was the only one who could talk at the time. You didn't get what I said. He was the only one who could bring it into being. But now, he has made you a new creation in Christ Jesus, shown you who you are so now you don't have to wait for him to talk. You speak. And you speak into existence what was already made in Christ Jesus. Do you understand? And God made no fornicators in Christ. He made no homosexuals in Christ. He made no sodomites in Christ. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me, but I will preach this. People say all the time, well, I was born this way. And my answer is, you can't be born again that way. You can't be. Now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about manifestation of the truth. See, it's true before it manifests. Mm. Let me go back. Uh, 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 did, did you see what I just what I just showed you? See, so just like the original creation is created in God and must be spoken into existence, the new creation is created in Christ and must be spoken into existence. In the original creation, God was the only one who could do the talking. There's no man to speak. So only God can bring it in to existence. But in the new creation, <laughs> woo, 
he has, woo, he has given us the same authority that he gave Christ Jesus. And just as he could speak and a thing could happen, now he has given to every new creation the authority to speak into existence what he has made. This is what this means when he says, we are his workmanship. In other words, he's the one who worked us. He's the one who put us together. We are his workmanship, watch this, created in Christ Jesus for good works. It doesn't mean that we could do good things. That's not what that means. It means we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus so that we can manifest the goodness in us he made. We're his work with you, created in Christ Jesus for good work. That doesn't see what this religion said, so we can do good things. No! We are his work with you, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Watch this, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He prepared what we were to walk in. We were to walk in righteousness, we were to walk in holiness, we were to walk in divine hell. He's not talking about saving whales. Goodness. Are you still with me? Yeah. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 6. Goodness, I'm way behind. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6. Did that help anybody? Yeah. Did, 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 you, did you see that? that um, uh. So what makes you no longer what you were is the fact that you were washed. You were sanctified and you were justified. And the moment you were washed sanctified and justified, you became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now the job is to find out what you have been made and speak that so that it manifests. The job is not to try now to stop being a drunkard. I was meditating in this some time ago. <laughs> Lord, you want me to say that? I was meditating in this some time ago. I was in prayer. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, and we were dealing with new creation realities. He was dealing with me with all this new creation. I mean, he's been dealing with me about this for years, four or five years. I started preaching it the last couple years. But he, but he, he asked me, he said, he said son, uh, he said, will there be homosexuals in heaven? I said, no. Absolutely not. None. Absolutely not. Yeah, I know. Pay attention. I'm not going to stop talking. I said, son, will there be homosexuals in heaven? I said, no, sir. Absolutely not. He said, that's correct. And then he asked me, he said, son, will there be heterosexuals in heaven? And then I said, no, absolutely not. Because if you read your Bible, the scripture says in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. Then the Lord said to me, and I'm talking about the realities of the new creation now. Then the Lord said to me, he said, <laughs> he said, that's exactly right. He said, the church has made an eternal issue out of a temporal circumstance. Please hear what I'm about to say. And that is not, that is not justifying that which is against scripture. See, don't take away what I'm not saying. 
See, the fact of the matter is, whatever you were on that list, drunkard, reviler, extortioner, homosexual, sodomite, whatever you were on that list, when you became a new creation, you became something different. Now here's the problem. We have not taught people. And I'm talking about the church. We have not taught people how to manifest the life they've received and thus change their behavior. So you've got drunkards and fornicators and homosexuals trying to stop being drunkards, trying to stop being fornicators, and trying to stop being homosexuals rather than receiving the life they have and declaring the life they've been given so that they can be transformed. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? See, some of y'all can't, can't, can't do it. So, 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 see, we're talking about the manifestation of life. The life you have received in Christ Jesus. But as long as you keep preaching religion, let, let me show it to you. Let, let, let me show you. As long as you keep preaching, stop this, stop that, don't do the other thing. All you are actually doing is reinforcing the very behavior you're trying to stop. And this is what the scripture teaches. Are you still here? Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me show you. Let, let me show you. Let me just go from 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 11. Go to Romans 8, 20, 28. Just, just go there. Because you read this stuff uh, when you're trying to encourage yourself. But we never apply it to anybody other than us. Look at this, Romans 8, 28. And, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his words. All things work together for good. All things work together. So, so even what you were is working together for your good. Even the behaviors you were, you were engaged in are working together for your good. When you love God and you're called according to his purpose. Why? What is his purpose? His purpose is for you to be conformed to the image of his son. Watch. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Now what? He said, everything's working together. All things are working together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Why? Because all of us, no matter what state we found ourselves in, have been chosen to be conformed to the image of his son. So if you are a, a, a drunkard, you have been chosen to be conformed to the image of his son. If you are a sodomite, you have been chosen to be conformed to the image of his son. If you are a homosexual, you have been chosen to be conformed to the image of his son. And if you actually do this, it'll work together for your good because your manifestation will show no matter who you are, this works no matter who you were. Watch. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, that is Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also It's the same thing he's talking about over there in 1 Corinthians. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. You were washed, sanctified, and justified so you could go from whatever you were to be conformed into the image of his son. Now how does that happen? Go quickly with me to, yeah, go quickly uh, whew, with me to 2 uh, Corinthians, no, I'm, I'm, go quickly to Colossians chapter number 2 verse 20. Yeah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. Are you with me? Yeah. I said, are you with me? Yeah. That, that don't get me wrong. Oh, Jesus. Okay, God, I got to say this piece now in that sense. I, 
open this up. And see, and so the Lord said to me, he said, he said, see, here's, here's what you, Bishop McClendon, here's what no one is able to do. When a man or woman is born again of the Spirit of God, but they are not taught how to be conformed to the image of God's Son. They're born again, but they are not taught the way you, the, the way you manifest this life is not by trying to stop the old one. Let me, let, me give, let me give you. So you're a drunkard. You're a drunk. You come from a family of drunks. You're born again. And you want to stop drinking. The way you manifest, the way, the way that happens is not to try to stop drinking. So you're a fornicator. You've been a fornicator all your life. I'm, I'm using these rather than homosexual because when you say homosexual, everybody gets tense. But, but just pick anyone in the list, okay? Anyone in the list. You can pick anyone in the list. Same principles occur, uh, uh, apply. Okay, so, so, so watch this. So, so watch this. And don't come protesting outside my church either. I'll come out there and preach the same thing to you. Now stay with me. Say with but, 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 but when you are born again, born from above, but you are not taught how to be conformed to the image of God's Son, what you do is you try to stop things you used to do instead of manifesting the life you have now received. See, manifesting the life you've now received is done by decreeing it. By saying it. But what we do is we get people born again. And we say, stop, stop, stop this, stop that. Don't do this. Don't go there. Stay away from this. I'm going to show it to you. And see, the Lord said this to me. He, he said to me, he said, he said, son, when, when a man or woman is born again, and this is why neither you nor any saint nor anyone else can judge, because if a person is born again, but they are not taught, then they may spend all their lives trying to change behavior by the wrong mechanism. And then he said to me, he said, and if perchance their lives are shortened before they learn how to manifest life, you, nor you, nor you, nor you can tell whether they'll go to heaven or not. Because it's not a matter of their behavior. It's a matter of their heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God... Now let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. It's time to preach the, the, the whole gospel. It's time to preach the whole thing. And that is not to excuse any kind of missing the mark. It is to attempt to equip the saints so that they can manifest the life they've been given and stop, watch this, fighting the life that no longer exists. How do you win a battle against a life that no longer exists? You are fighting phantoms. You are beating ghosts. Go, ah, thank you, Jesus. No wonder the Lord raised me up to come preach this today. Watch this. Watch, go, 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 to, go to Colossians. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Boy, boy this is, this, this, now watch this. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Yeah! No, no, ah. And so you got to put this in context. And you also have to remember now how the Apostle Paul writes because the Apostle Paul will oftentimes, he'll begin something with if. When he's actually, when he says if, it's not saying like this may be or it may not be. He's saying if because he's already made the point. Previously, watch this. Verse 20, he says, Therefore, if 
You died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. So, so get it. He's saying, when you were born again, because you were with Christ through the entire process of his passion, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating, you died with him from the basic principles of this world, meaning the basic principles that you have been taught to put into effect to change things in the world, you died to those. They do not, translation, the basic principles of this world do not work for the new creation. Now watch this. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of this world, watch this. Why? As though living in the world. Notice what he just said. You're not even living in this world. You're from another place. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of this world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Now, now, now again, he's not saying, you know, just do anything you want. No, 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 no. He's talking about regulations to try to change your status or your behavior. The Academy of Healing and Wellness Convention returns with fresh revelation about the grace and power of Jesus Christ an essential resource for every believer, especially in these challenging times. In these extensive sessions, Bishop McClendon teaches how the Word of God is the new creation's medication, how the power to heal is always present using God's kingdom principles, and how God doesn't punish us with sickness because we did something wrong. The ministry of Jesus is a teaching, preaching, healing ministry. He heals all kinds of disease, and He heals everything. Which means no matter what kind they come up with, he heals it. If you desire to walk in divine health, make the Academy of Healing and Wellness your center for disease control and turn on the flow of God's healing power today. Now available on the Bishop of Clinton Digital Download Store. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network.